like I'm much mm -hmm. more concerned about the liquids that are in plastics. And I think those are a bigger priority to avoid. And even more so the liquids that are hot. I mean, there's no question people need to minimize that. Once in a while, it's okay. But when it's constant, these daily exposures to these toxins, I mean, they're toxins. There's no two ways about it. And when people are literally drinking out of plastics every day, they're heating their food in plastics. They've got dishes that are plastic, utensils sometimes in plastic. There's just so much leaching. You're spiking your blood levels, and that's a major problem. From the Weston A. Price Foundation, welcome to the Wise Traditions podcast for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. We are your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. Hey, Hilda here. From water bottles and prepackaged foods to cars and clothing, plastics pervade our lives. Plastics are so prevalent that they pollute the oceans. But do they pollute our bodies as well? This is episode 260, and our guest today is Dr. Anthony J. Anthony has a PhD in biochemistry from Boston University School of Medicine, where he studied fats, hormones, and cholesterol. He currently works at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, researching stem cells, epigenetics, and infrared light. Today, Anthony speaks to us about the hormone-disrupting effects of plastic on the human body. He explains where it comes from, like leaching into our fruits and vegetables and meat from packaging, for example and how plastic toxicity can lead to early puberty and even clinical depression in our children. He also offers ideas for how to avoid plastic in our lives and how to detoxify from all of its buildup in the body. Before we get into it, a quick shout out to our sponsors, Mountain Rose Herbs. Mountain Rose Herbs offers high-quality, organically grown herbs, spices, teas, essential oils, and botanical goods. Since 1987, they have made it their mission to provide plant lovers with exceptional organic botanicals harvested with the utmost respect for the places they grow and the people who grow them. Learn more about their philosophy and products at mountainroseherbs.com. And check this out. They became the first company in Oregon to earn a zero-waste certification at its highest ranking, platinum, because they diverted 97.6% of their waste in 2017. I'm telling you they are a company with integrity and passion, and their variety is unparalleled. They sell everything from essential oils, herbs and spices, to teas, to culinary ingredients, bath and body care products, and more. So go to mountainroseherbs.com and order today. And use the discount code WAPF10 at checkout to receive 10% off your order. That's mountainroseherbs.com, and the coupon code is WAPF10. And this episode is brought to you in part by Grass-Fed Intestines with Tripe by Ancestral Supplements. Ancestral Supplements makes New Zealand-sourced, nose-to-tail, organ meats, bone marrow, and intestines, and simple, convenient gelatin capsules. Intestines, stomach, tripe, and other gelatinous parts provide concentrated amounts of connective tissue, undenatured collagen, probiotics, and other gut-specific proteins that are now absent from the modern diet. So visit ancestralsupplements.com to see what they can do for you. Ancestral supplements, putting back in what the modern world has left out. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. Welcome to Wise Traditions, Anthony. Thanks for having me. I loved your book about kind of the toxins in our environment that we need to get away from. And you were telling me that you have someone that just reached out to you who's had some wonderful results by avoiding some estrogenic chemicals in their own life. Can you tell us that story? Yeah, I just literally 33 minutes ago got an email from a guy named Mark over in Australia. And I'm going to be on his podcast tomorrow. So, you know, it, he's fairly open about what he says. And I don't feel like it's confidential. Yeah. But he said he's a month into an estrogenic free life. And, and this is quoting him. And I can feel the difference. Body fat is dropping off faster. I feel more vigorous and pumped for life. My strength in the gym and drive to lift is higher. I wish I had my blood work done before I started because I'm sure it would be a testimonial to your silver plan. And I thought I was eliminating most of the estrogen mimics. I wasn't even close. Finally, I'm sweating every morning to eliminate the glitter, quote unquote glitter, and other top 10 list estrogenics that I come into contact with. And it's definitely making a huge impact on DHEA and testosterone levels. I've read your book four times now, and I'm super pumped to chat with you tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. In my book, I, you know, glitter is literally made from plastic. And in my book, I reference these plastic chemicals 
and how difficult they are to get rid of from our lives. You know, can you imagine if you got glitter on your body or something? How, you know, my kids play with glitter. Just how difficult mm-hmm. it is to get that glitter, you know, off your skin, off your clothes, out of your house. And so he's kind of referencing that. But, you know, it's not as difficult as most people think. You know, you just have to take small steps initially. And when you purchase future items, make sure to get glass or stainless steel or things that aren't plastic whenever you can. Yeah. So I saw this frontline plastic wars and it was talking about how hard it is to get rid of plastic. Um, You know, we've been told we can recycle it, but it actually ends up in other countries and it's really not easy to dispose of. But it's not only bad for the environment, you're saying it's bad for our bodies as well. Right. And that's the thing that they didn't address in that documentary. So they did a great job of telling us how prevalent it is and how poorly we're actually dealing with plastics and we think we're recycling them but we're really not in most cases but again it's it's leaching into our oceans it's degrading it's leaching into our drinking water these these plastic chemicals are real problematic for our health what do they do to us anthony well they they basically act like estrogen in our body so that leads to a whole host of issues starting with infertility because it's it's basically tricking our systems and and altering our sex hormones. But then also, for example, children with higher BPA levels, they have more depression. Basically, if their urine levels of BPA are higher, they have more depression. So there's a lot of things like that. It it alters your brain. Men, for example, you see decreased motivation. You see more apathy in men when they're exposed to some of these estrogen chemicals. Their testosterone goes down. Women as well. You know, I talk to a lot of women that have low testosterone issues. And some of the lab tests, they even consider zero okay. Like the lab reference range will be five to 20 or something for testosterone for women. But some other lab companies, they'll say zero to 20, right? Like as if you have zero testosterone and that's okay, which is absurd. (laughs) It's like they're moving the goalpost. Is that what I hear you saying? They're moving the goalpost? Exactly. They've done it with vitamin D. They've done it with testosterone. They're even changing the, they're trying to change the normal age range for puberty because puberty is getting younger and younger. And so rather than saying that's an issue, they're trying to say, let's lower the normal range because we're seeing it so commonly, which is insane, really. It's not addressing the problem. Well, yeah, no, it's not, ind- it's not addressing the problem at all. Well, what's weird to me, Anthony, is that a lot of our food comes wrapped in plastic. Right, yeah, and there's definitely leaching, you know, there's no question. And a lot of the vegans talk about this because of course they like to point out that chicken you know has a lot of phthalates and beef has a lot of phthalates and it's because they're wrapping these foods in plastics you don't have phthalates if you're not wrapping it in plastic so i try and find a farmer you know for when i when i buy a whole cow for example i have four kids so i do a whole cow Mm -hmm. i try and find a farmer that's willing to basically have it butchered and then wrapped in parchment paper not plastic wrapped you know like freezer paper right That's how they used to do it, right? Yeah. I mean, and you can still find people that do that pretty as a normal thing, but it's harder and harder to find. And if you request it, it's no big deal. So that's definitely something you can do. Yeah. But so I get cheese from a farm, for example, and it comes kind of shrink wrapped. Are you saying that that plastic leaks into the cheese? A little bit. Yeah. And I mean, certainly on the outside, the thing about the solids, I'm not as concerned about. Like I'm much Mm -hmm. more concerned about the liquids that are in plastics. And I think those are a bigger priority to avoid. And even more so the liquids that are hot. I mean, there's no question people need to minimize that. Once in a while, it's okay. But when it's constant, these daily exposures to these toxins, I mean, they're toxins. There's no two ways about it. And when people are literally drinking out of plastics every day, they're heating their food in plastics. They've got dishes that are plastic, utensils sometimes in plastic. There's just so much leaching. You're spiking your blood levels, and that's a major problem. Now, how did you first find out about this, Anthony? Well, I, I basically did my PhD on cholesterol and hormones. Mm-hmm. And as I was researching testosterone, I started to realize there's these artificial estrogen chemicals and nobody talks about them because sometimes you find researchers that research one or another, they only research BPA or they only research phthalates where they only Mm -hmm. research a different artificial estrogen, like the ones found in sunscreen chemicals. Nobody putting it together as a full story and seeing they're all kind of connected. They all act like estrogen. So, you know, I tried to put that together as an entire story in my book because because I wanted to avoid them. 
I didn't want to have these exposures for my own kids and for my own self. So that's really what inspired it. Okay, so help us understand what direction all of these hormone disruptors are coming at us from. Yeah, so I mean, they've done studies on children's daycare facilities in California. And as you can imagine, there's plastic slides, there's plastic cushions on the floor, there's plastic everything. You know, all the toys are plastic. And they find the air levels, not just the plastic, touching the plastic, but actually the air that the kids are breathing in is going above the government's own cancer limits. And what's crazy about that is the government's cancer limits are quite high. You know, they're not, they're, they're not <sighs> conservative at all. They're, they're really way, way up there. I think you should avoid plastic chemicals way below what the government thinks you should avoid the as. because that oftentimes the health issues from these toxins, they take decades or at least years to really see the big impact from. Mm -hmm. And so most of the scientific studies are based around a few weeks of testing. And so they don't really see that much issue from them. So they allow these really high levels. And so if you're going above the government's own recommended limits, that's a real problem. And so be aware of your environment, how much plastic is in your environment. Even the linoleum floors are made out of plastic. So that's another source. So you know if you're putting in a new floor, Oftentimes you can get away from that and find something that's not plastic, you know, polyurethane is not plastic. It's, it's a lot better than, you know, like a wood, a wood floor with polyurethane, for example, a lot, lot better than, you know, these artificial plastic floors, shower curtains. Right. And I'm just, oh, I'm just thinking about those children still, because I was remembering, you know, I gave my kids sippy cups, you know, and pacifiers and so many plastic toys. And I just, I mean, I guess that would be the first line of defense is to make sure there's not so much plastic around where our children are and what they're eating and where they're playing and such. Yeah, they're a lot more sensitive because their hormones, you know, are still basically triggering a lot of extra additional development. They've done studies on children's mattresses, like crib mattresses, and they find those levels are yeah. above the government's limits in a lot of cases. So you have to be especially careful what your children are sleeping on. And if you happen to have a vinyl mattress, figure out some way to cover that all up because, you know, that's a lot of plastic leaching into the air. That's the new car smell too, you know? I mean, that new mm -hmm. car smell is plastic. And a, a mutual friend of ours from Minnesota here, he puts on these retreats in the cold weather and things. I think you were at one of them this winter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he talks about how to combat these toxins is basically you roll down your windows and when it's hot in the summer, there's a lot more leaching going on into your car in the air. Yeah. So you, ro you can roll down the windows and turn on your fan for a little bit and just kind of blow out you know, some of those phthalates and some of those chemicals. And I think that's a really yeah. a great practical tip for people as we go into the summer, just again, to find another way to avoid these toxins. And I just saw today people wearing plastic face masks, <laughs> like, and they're, and oh, there's, they're no. bragging about how they're recycling plastic from the oceans and making it into face masks. And then basically people are wearing these in, you know, in these hospitals or just around town, which is ridiculous because they're just basically breathing in all these toxins and they're throwing off their CO2 balance. And you know, it's, it's going to achieve the opposite effect of what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like to get athletic wear from a certain company. And I noticed recently some of their little spandex leggings and stuff, they'll say, oh, these are made from, you know, recycled water bottles. And I'm thinking, is that a good idea? Right. It's the same thing. Why would I want to put that on my body? Right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's a frustrating thing how they they tout this as technology, right? The idea that we can take plastics and make fabrics, you know, from plastic, but it's yeah. it's not a great situation. Even if it wasn't a health issue, which it is, even if it wasn't, it's just creating more plastic that we're dumping into landfills and into the oceans and you know, that's certainly an issue for wildlife and the ocean. And again, it's certainly an issue for humans as well. Right. So, okay. So step one is kind of just becoming aware of how much plastic we're surrounded by in our homes. And as you said, with the toys and all that. And then step two, pay attention to how much plastic is around our food, right? What else should we be looking for? Yeah. I mean, there's a, people oftentimes ask me about personal care products because all of them are in plastics. And mm -hmm. I think it's okay. You know, like you're going to have some leach into those soaps like the shampoos and conditioners yeah they're going to leach plastic chemicals but it's pretty much inevitable you know at some point you're going to have some plastic exposures and 
I don't think people need mm -hmm. to be too hypochondriac from those. I think look around your environment. Everybody's different and just figure out where your major exposures are. If you have major exposures and just try and slowly eliminate them over time, you know, and you know, if you can afford it, you can be more extreme. If you have a risk for breast cancer or something like that, you, you should be more extreme. If you have low testosterone, you should be more extreme. You know, a lot of these estrogen issues like polycystic ovarian, right? Things like that, PCOS, ovarian syndrome, yeah. things like that. You know, you want to be more aware of your environment and more strict with yourself in avoiding these plastics. But Everybody needs to take steps these days because they're everywhere. And it's harming not only our, you know, not only our mental health, our physical health, you know, it's just changing the way we think, frankly. They've done animal studies, for example, with rats, and they find in particular males again, they find male sex drive goes way down, male motivation goes way down. And I think you see it in our culture today, you know, particularly with this lockdown situation, you see a lot of, you know, just apathy and people don't seem to really care what's going on. And I mean, it's a problem. I think <laughs> like, it, we've kind of set up our culture to just be accepting of any kind of BS that we're, we're being thrown. And a lot of our freedoms are being taken away because of that apathy that we're basically chemically inducing. Wow. That's a scary thing. Yeah. Nobody's quite framed it that way to me before, but that toxins could be making us apathetic and you're saying plastic in particular oh yeah for sure because they're acting like estrogen and again that's altering the way our brains function and the way we approach you know problems and you know it's not necessarily aggression um, although sometimes when when people raise their testosterone absurdly high they get aggressive but it's more about receptivity right like if you have low testosterone and high estrogen, you're generally more receptive. And that's great in certain situations, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. um, but taken to a too far of an extreme, you know, if you dose people up with estrogen too much, then they're receptive for all kinds of silliness, like, like mandatory vaccines, and it's a lot of things that we shouldn't just be, you know, we shouldn't just be blindly walking into and walking off a cliff. You know, I think we should be a lot less receptive about those things, a lot more questioning. Coming up, Anthony speaks to us about how to lower our exposure to plastics and how to detoxify our bodies. You're listening to the Wise Traditions podcast from the Weston A. Price Foundation. We pause now to recognize our sponsors. North Star Bison. Thanks to many people just like you, North Star Bison is celebrating over 25 years of healing the land and feeding people well. Their focus from day one at North Star has been to raise meat as nature intended, to regenerate vital native habitats that sink mega amounts of carbon, which improve air and water quality and support native wildlife, trillions of insects, and even fish, all while providing us nutrient-rich, deeply nourishing foods that taste amazing and leave us feeling satisfied. North Star Bison even field harvests to respect and preserve the dignity of life, as well as the tender, superior quality of product that nature intends. At North Star Bison, as you could guess, their flagship product is the 100% grass-fed and finished bison. But their offerings have grown to include Rocky Mountain elk, 100% grass-fed and finished beef and lamb, rabbit, pastured corn and soy-free pork, soy and corn-free chicken and turkey, 100% grass-fed raw cheeses, wild Alaskan sockeye salmon, raw pet foods, and so much more. Our family recently got a huge order from them, and we were ecstatic. Bison blend burgers were soon on the grill. So spend over 250 and get free shipping. And use the code WAPF at checkout to get 10% off your first order at NorthStarBison.com and rediscover food as nature intended. Again, that's the coupon code WAPF at North Star Bison for 10% off. And this episode is brought to you in part by Grass-Fed Intestines with Tripe by Ancestral Supplements. Ancestral Supplements makes New Zealand-sourced nose-to-tail, organ meats, bone marrow, and intestines in simple, convenient gelatin capsules. According to the great John Fire Lame Deer, the eating of guts evolved into a contest. Quote, in the old days, we used to eat the guts of the buffalo, making a contest of it. Two fellows getting hold of a long piece of intestines from opposite ends, starting chewing toward the middle, seeing who can get there first. That's eating. 
Those buffalo guts, full of half-fermented, half-digested grass and herbs, you didn't need any pills and vitamins when you swallowed those, end quote. Intestines, stomach, tripe, and other gelatinous parts provided concentrated amounts of connective tissue, undenatured collagen, probiotics, and other gut-specific proteins that are now absent from the modern diet. So visit ancestralsupplements.com to see what they can do for you. Ancestral Supplements, putting back in what the modern world has left out. This is Holistic Hilda, and you're listening to Wise Traditions. What I hear you saying is we can think more clearly if right. our hormones are functioning properly. For sure. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy to me that you literally see depression in children when they have high levels of BPA in their urine and phthalates yeah. in their urine, these plastic chemicals, because children don't have mortgages. They don't have all this stress. They, you know, Nowadays, of course, they do have social media and there's problems with some of that going on, the bullying and whatnot, but still they shouldn't have you know, outright depression, clinical depression. Right. Um, so clearly it's affecting, it's affecting everybody. And so have you worked with patients that you have helped, obviously with the smart guy, but with others who you've helped lower their exposure to plastics and estrogen mimicking chemicals? And have you seen improvement in their mental clarity and other areas of their life as well? Oh, sure. Yeah, all the time. I mean, you know, I do DNA consulting and you know, there's definitely people that are more sensitive than other people. It's just like carbs, right? Like yeah. some people have amazing genetics for, for basically dealing with carbs, <laughs> but that's <laughs> really, really rare. But some people do have amazing genetics just for managing carbs. So they eat a lot of carbs and they think everybody else should be able to eat a lot of carbs and have no issues, right? Those are the, usually the ones out there speaking <laughs> the loudest and telling everybody calorie counting works, eating lots of carbs is great, whatever. But most people can't deal with that, right? Their genes don't support that. It's just almost everybody, but there's always the exceptional people. Yeah. Um, and estrogen is the same way. These toxins, it's the same thing. When I'm looking at people's genetics, if you've got really poor toxin clearance genes, it's almost inevitable that you're going to have problems. And there's some genes involved in heavy metal clearance and glutathione, for example. You know, so in that case, it helps to support your system by taking liposomal glutathione or finding other ways to increase your glutathione. NAC is a good one, you know, N-acetylcysteine. I mean, there's a lot of technical things you can get into, but it, it does vary for different people. But specific to these plastic chemicals, if you've got poor estrogen genes, if you can't clear these artificial estrogens, you see a lot of immediate problems like gynecomastia, which basically means breast tissue development in males, for example. Mm. You know, you see things like that. And again, other people that don't have those issues, they kind of scoff and they say, well, you know, I, I drink out of plastic bottles every day and I have no issues. Well, first of all, sometimes as you age, your metabolism goes down and you become more sensitive to those issues as you age, first of all. Mm -hmm. But secondly, you know, some people are more genetically disposed at any age to have health issues from those chemicals. And, you know, <laughs> we shouldn't make a general uh, rule based on somebody who's exceptional at clearing these chemicals or toxins. But let's say I do my best now to avoid, you know, foods wrapped in plastic and I'm, you know, drinking out of my glass water bottle all day and things like that. How would you recommend that I do detox my system from these estrogen mimicking chemicals? Yeah, good question. I mean, definitely sweat. Find a way to sweat. Right now, currently, my sauna is inaccessible. So I try and find ways to work out to induce a sweat at least three times a week and preferably use a sauna. I mean, there's just so much research. They've done 20 year studies on saunas. They literally find all cause mortality decreases. Literally there's less cancer. There's less Alzheimer's. There's less heart disease. There's less everything when you use a sauna mm -hmm. three times a week. If you get more than three times, that's great. But at least three times seems to be the magic number. Yeah. Um, and again, if you don't have access to a sauna, sweat, you know, sweat it. <laughs> don't, I was going to say don't sweat it, but actually sweat it. You should sweat it. They've done, and, and they've done studies on BPA and phthalates. People can look it up. They, they're called BUS studies, B-U-S, blood, urine, sweat. Uh -huh. and, and they find some people don't urinate any of these chemicals out, but when they go in saunas, they sweat out a ton of them. Oh, even when that's not in their urine. Hmm. Interesting. And of course, we know it's a wise tradition worldwide in different cultures to like have a sweat lodge or a place where that is exactly happening. Exactly. Yeah. 
And that's a great tradition. It's a great thing. It's a great wisdom that people need to be, you know, especially today. You know, back then, our ancestors, yeah, they probably had some heavy metals in their water. They probably had a few toxins, but nothing compared to what we have now. And so it's even more important now. I don't think, I don't think people should uh, underestimate how important that really is. Now, I feel like I might have asked you this on another podcast because you've been a guest before, but if you were going to lower your plastic intake or your plastic exposure, not really your intake, where would you start? Yeah. I mean, I would start with the pantry and in particular the, the uh, Tupperware, you know, because just get mm -hmm. glass. It lasts a long time. So I'd suggest starting there with the foods mm -hmm. that you're putting in your body directly and the, and the liquids. Again, if you've got these plastic bottles and things like that, I really recommend people ditch them, then they get stainless steel or glass, right? And people argue kind of about how much leaching there is and all this. There's definitely leaching. You know, it's historically, they used to say that BPA doesn't leach, you know, like way back. And that's so clearly wrong, you know, and now we know <laughs> that. But scientists used to assure everybody, it's okay, BPA doesn't leach. And they, did you know in the 19, uh, in the 1940s or so, or maybe even as early as the 20s, they were researching BPA as a birth control? <gasps> no, I didn't know that. Yeah, they were literally investigating it because they knew it acted like estrogen. And then when they found out that it, you can make plastic from BPA, they said, well, let's shift gears and make money in that direction. And then they just went around assuring everybody it doesn't leach because the BPA molecules are all linked together. You know, So there's no quote unquote free BPA molecules. They're all linked together. And of course, we know now that's wrong because there's always going to be some free BPA molecules that get into your liquid when you have plastic. But what's really ironic is now they've they've done the same thing with phthalates. So P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S, that's the spelling for phthalates. Yeah. And scientists right now, now not all of them because it's becoming more and more outdated and obvious that this isn't true, but a lot of scientists are out there trying to convince people that it's okay phthalates don't leach <laughs> like plastic number one if you look at plastic number one and the recycling symbol on the bottom of a container yeah that's polyethylene tera phthalate and most people you know they're they're trying to say that's that one's okay because it's bpa free oh but in reality you know, first of all bpa free bisphenol a is bpa you can make plastic from bisphenol s which is just as estrogenic just as toxic just as problematic as BPA, but you can say it's BPA free because now it's BPS and you, and you can just keep changing the letters on the end. You can change the chemistry just a little bit. So you can make BPF, you can make BPAF, you can make all these BPs, bisphenols. And so, you know, there's a crazy amount of issues there in that direction. But if you completely change the plastic and make polyethylene terephthalate, yeah. right, then you, you end up with phthalate leaching. And I contacted a company about this. I contacted one of the best companies in the United States they, where they do water testing. Yeah. And it was like $300 per sample. So I was willing to pay it. I figured for the public, you know, for educating people on my Instagram, I'll just pay for it and test a bunch of bottled waters from the grocery store. Yeah. And and test for BPA, right? So that's 300 bucks. And then test for phthalates. And that's again, $300. But what was crazy is our natural estrogen is between 20 for men and up to 200 for women, mm -hmm. right? 20 nanograms per liter up to 200 nanograms per liter. And depending on the time of the month for women, they can also be around 20, just like men, but then they also go up to about 200. Uh -huh. And what's crazy is the testing for BPA, they tested it down to about 10 nanograms per liter, which is good, right? Because that's below what our natural estrogen is. Yeah. So at least it's kind of relative. It's relevant. I mean, right? The B BPA testing is relevant to our actual levels of hormone. Uh -huh. But then the phthalates, this company didn't, they test the lowest that they would test for phthalates was like 10,000 nanograms per liter. So if it was anywhere below that, they wouldn't, t they wouldn't flag it. They would say, you're okay. You don't have any phthalates in there. Okay. But if it was above 10,000, then they would flag it under the red flag and say, here's your level. Yeah. So in other words, we're not even measuring to determine if they're leaching yet. Yeah. You know, the phthalates, the BPA, we're doing a good job, right? It's like their standard was so high that they might be like, okay, you're cool, but actually it could have up to 10,000 nanograms. Right. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? And so in other words, so in other words, they're testing BPA at proper levels. And that's why everybody's saying, whoa, watch out for BPA. It leaches like crazy, right? Because they're actually measuring it. <laughs> phthalates. 
because they're ignoring anything below 10,000, they're basically saying it's okay, it doesn't leach. <laughs> but that's just because they've set the bar so high that, you know, <laughs> of course it's leaching. They're just not actually picking it up. They're not trying to measure lower. Well, I'm so grateful that you're getting this information out to people because it seems like there are so many other things people are paying attention to, especially now. <laughs> but there are small things that we can take control of and that will improve our health immeasurably. Right. Yeah. Especially and these things impact your immune system. You know, I mean, I'm sure you've had a lot of guests on here talking about that specific thing. These toxins are really problematic for your immune system. There's no question. And so even from that perspective, this is a great time as ever to kind of overhaul your, to get those things out of your life. Yeah, definitely. And I'm thankful that people are spending more time at home right now so that they can focus on how they're nourishing their families and how they're taking care of their bodies. So this is a good time, like you said. So I want to pose my final question to you now, Anthony, if the listener could do one thing to improve their health, what would you recommend that they do? Well, in the context of today's discussion, you know, I recommend <laughs> avoiding plastic, <laughs> get them out of your life. It's not just about recycling. It's really about your health. I think that's a major overlooked thing. And a lot of these documentaries people are watching right now, but it's, it's the issue. Wow. Fantastic. Oh my gosh, Anthony, thank you so much. I think we've given people a lot to think about and I'm really grateful for your time today. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Our guest today was Dr. Anthony J. Visit his website at ajconsultingcompany.com. And I'm Hilda Labrador. You can find me at holistichilda.com. And for the show notes for this and every podcast episode, visit our website, westonaprice.org, and click on the podcast page. And now for a letter from a recent journal. LEDs. Some scientists have expressed skepticism at a link between blue light and AMD, age-related macular degeneration especially given that what matters is not just the light spectrum in question, but the intensity or the strength of the light and the duration of exposure. As one article has noted, even incandescence can cause damage to the eye. LEDs are just able to do this more quickly. A recent study showed that the damage wasn't caused by blue light in general, but by looking directly at the light. As the Madrid scientist herself put it from a study of LEDs on albino rats, she said, Eyes are not designed to look directly at light. They are designed to see with light. Given that this is how light bulbs function, people rarely look directly at them. The greater issue isn't with lighting choices, but with the technology many people use. Researchers have also pointed out that the most likely mechanism for damage is oxidative stress. We may end up discovering, as with sun exposure, that the culprit isn't the light, but the poor nutritional and health status of those exposed to it. Thus, a traditional, nutrient-rich, and antioxidant-laden diet is really the best for people who have little choice but to look at light, along with employing common sense learning to sit farther away from technological gadgets when being used, reading real books instead of e-books, technological fixes, and such that we may discuss in a forthcoming article. That is from John Moody from Kentucky. John, thank you for that letter to the editor for elucidating us on the subject of LED. And if you have a letter you'd like to write, just email us at info at westonaprice.org and we may submit your letter to the editor for an upcoming journal. And that's it, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Stay well, my friend, y hasta pronto. On behalf of the Weston A. Price Foundation, thanks for listening. We have many free resources to support you on your health journey. Visit WestonAPrice.org to find podcasts, articles, videos, and more. You can also find a local chapter near you for help in finding sources of great food. We invite you to support the Foundation's mission of education, research, and activism by becoming a member. Thanks again, and take care. Wise Traditions is a project of the Weston A. Price Foundation for wise traditions in food, farming, and the healing arts. The content on this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended to substitute for the advice provided by your doctor or other healthcare professional. It is not intended to be, nor does it constitute healthcare or medical advice.